you go. They have seen something inside you. A demon. I don't know what's in my food. I don't know what the heat is. You can't understand what you see now. This is insane. This isn't you. It's what's inside you. There is no demon, Christina. My name is Christina Lopez. I came to this place to die. Why did you go there? I told you, it was not safe. Do you know these people? The man, he is her son. He helps. The woman, she practices the old ways. She's a bruja. They don't believe they can let you go. They have seen something inside you. A demon. I don't know what the heat is. You can't understand what you see now. This is insane. This isn't you. It's what's inside you. There is no demon, Christina. My name is Christina Lopez. I came to this place to die. Why did you go there? I told you, it was not safe. Do you know these people? The man, he is her son. He helps. The woman, 
She practices the old ways. She's a bruja. They don't believe they can let you go. They have seen something inside you. A demon. I don't know what's in my food. I don't know what the heat is. You can't understand what you see now. This is insane. This isn't you. It's what's inside you. There is no demon, Christina. My name is Christina Lopez. I came to this place to die. Why did you go there? I told you, it was not safe. Do you know these people? The man, he is her son. He helps. The woman, she practices the old ways. She's a bruja. They don't believe they can let you go. They have seen something inside you. A demon. in my food. I don't know what the heat is. You can't understand what you see now. This is insane. This isn't you. It's what's inside you. There is no demon, Christina. My name is Christina Lopez. I came to this place to die. Why did you go there? I told you, it was not safe. Do you know these people?
The man, he is her son. He helps. The woman, she practices the old ways. She's a bruja. They don't believe they can let you go. They have seen something inside you. A demon. in my food. I don't know what the heat is. You can't understand what you see now. This is insane. This isn't you. It's what's inside you. There is no demon, Christina. My name is Christina Lopez. I came to this place to die. Why did you go there? I told you, it was not safe. Do you know these people? The man, he is her son. He helps. The woman, she practices the old ways. She's a bruja. They don't believe they can let you go. They have seen something inside you. A demon. in my food. I don't know what the heat is. You can't understand what you see now. This is insane. This isn't you. It's what's inside you. There is no demon, Christina. My name is Christina Lopez. I came to this place to die. Why did you go there? I told you, 
It was not safe. Do you know these people? The man, he is her son. He helps. The woman, she practices the old ways. She's a bruja. They don't believe they can let you go. They have seen something inside you. A demon. I don't know what the heat is. You can't understand what you see now. This is insane. This isn't you. It's what's inside you. There is no demon, Christina. My name is Christina Lopez. I came to this place to die. Why did you go there? I told you, it was not safe. Do you know these people? The man, he is her son. He helps. The woman, she practices the old ways. She's a bruja. They don't believe they can let you go. They have seen something inside you. A demon. I don't know what the heat is. You can't understand what you see now. This is insane. This isn't you. It's what's inside you. There is no demon, Christina. My name is Christina Lopez. I came to this place to die.
Why did you go there? I told you, it was not safe. Do you know these people? The man, he is her son. He helps. The woman, she practices the old ways. She's a bruja. They don't believe they can let you go. They have seen something inside you. A demon. I don't know what the heat is. You can't understand what you see now. This is insane. This isn't you. It's what's inside you. There is no demon, Christina. My name is Christina Lopez. I came to this place to die. Why did you go there? I told you, it was not safe. Do you know these people? The man, he is her son. He helps. The woman, she practices the old ways. She's a bruja. They don't believe they can let you go. They have seen something inside you. A demon. I don't know what the heat is. You can't understand what you see now. This is insane. This isn't you. It's what's inside you. There is no demon, Christina. My name is Christina Lopez. I came to this place to die. Hi, this is Michelle Swope with Dread Central and this is Dissecting Horror. Tonight we have the creatives behind possession film, The Old Ways, which is available on Netflix right now. Uh, please everyone welcome Marcus Gabriel, uh, the writer of The Old Ways. Uh, Christopher Allender, who's the director of the film. T. Justin Ross is a producer on The Old Ways. And then we have the amazing Bridget Kelly Canales, who is the lead actor. She plays Christina in the film, as well as Andrea Cortez, who plays Miranda, uh, Christina's cousin in the movie. Um, and uh, like I said, the film is available on Netflix. Um, I first saw it at Chattanooga Film Festival a few months ago, and I just fell in love with it. 
Um, I, I kind of feel like maybe the possession subgenre has grown a little bit stale, at least for me. And, and um, this film is just such a fresh take on, uh, and there's some really cool brujas in the movie, uh, which I especially love. Um, and so the first thing uh, I wanted to know is um, Marcus, uh, talking about the possession subgenre and how I feel like it might be a little bit stale at this point and how unique the old ways is. Um, it has demons and brujas and again it deals with addiction. Did you have a specific inspiration to write this story? Yeah I mean I think I shared the same kind of attitude that you shared and I think others share of like this type of story um, has been done a bunch of times, and it's it's always cool and scary whenever some whenever you do a possession story. But I was trying to approach it from a different cultural point of view, and I knew if we could come in from like a Latin American or Hispanic point of view, it, everything would freshen up and become an exciting newer take. So I certainly um, kind of went back and remembered some stories that my mother had told me of her growing up in Puerto Rico of brujas and of you know healers and things like that and just amazing things I was raised very Catholic and to hear these stories from my mother I was like what are you kidding this actually you, you're telling me the story of something you saw uh, and it was just brilliant and it was really uh, exciting and I remember for like years I think man someone's gonna have to tell someone's gonna tell this story one day and it's gonna be great and I can't wait to see the movie and then years and years would pass and no one would tell this type of movie and I was like well I guess we gotta do it <laughs> or at least try and uh that was really you know the the inspiration behind some of you know setting the story in the way we we set it yeah that's why um I I love so much the first place so different I've never seen anything like it um and it just really uh, stood out for me. Um, Christopher, you directed the film, and I wanted to, what kind of research did you do into things like Mexican culture um, to achieve uh, what I think is a, an authentic look and feel of the movie? What research did you have to do on exorcisms? Yeah, um, <laughs> a lot, I mean, a lot of, just books and, and the internet um, and talking to, we, we talked to a lot of our friends um, as well. And it seemed like everybody we talked to with a Latinx background had a, had some sort of side story that was interesting that we could steal little tidbits from. And uh, when we were originally writing, when he was writing originally, we were kind of thinking globally about Brujeria and, and witchcraft, and we were researching everything we could find about it from multiple regions, uh, probably all the way as far away as the Philippines and, and stuff like that. And um, we started zeroing in on the stuff that we were just the stuff that we were gravitating most naturally towards and the kinds of stories we wanted to tell. And it kind of it led us to where the movie actually took place um, because of the influences that were resonating with us from Aztec and Mayan and um, Afro-Caribbean and a little bit of like Colombian, um, you know, Catholicism. And um, it just all kind of like led us to a place where like, where could all this really exist? And it was Southern Mexico on the East Coast um, in Veracruz. So it kind of, you know, we have like more research than we needed, I think, but it kind of all funneled down to like, where does, where does this want to take place um, in the world and on the map? And, um, but yeah, just, just lots of everything from Facebook <laughs> to straight up internet, the library, um, and just talking to people. And then, and then a lot of it was really just once we started to add the crew and the cast, uh, you know, into the equation, they all had their own opinions and they all had their own uh, experiences um, from across the globe and um, we just started just started building the world from that really the end so cool um, yeah when I was watching it I imagine uh 
Uh-oh, we're losing you, Michelle. Technical difficulties. Do a lot of research. And, mm -hmm. and you hear me? Oh, uh, now. The <laughs> words, a lot of research, and can you hear me? Can you, you hear me? those two phrases. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. But you can hear me okay now. Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. I am so sorry for all these technical difficulties. I feel like um, I'm the, the victim of a demonic possession today, to be honest. Yeah, it could be internet. a curse. We can blame it on a curse. <laughs> the same <laughs> thing happened. The same thing happened to us on set. We um, when we filmed the uh, the cursed the book, book, the red book, um, it actually broke our um, camera twice. So um, we get it. Uh, it's dangerous stuff. Dangerous stuff. Really? Yeah, my internet's been fine until today. So this is. This is interesting. Hmm. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, but like I was, um, I was saying before I, my internet went out again, um, Christopher, when I was watching the film the first time, I just kept thinking, you must have done so much research because um, there's, there's so much going on in the movie, uh, yeah, culturally. And then you've got the demons and uh, the brujas, which I said, I think is maybe my favorite um, part of the story. Um, and Bridget, I wanted to ask, uh, you play Christina and you are just wonderful in this movie. Um, Thank you. you have, you're, you're welcome. Uh, your character, Christina, she has a lot to deal with. <laughs> um, and I wanted to know what is it that appealed to you the most about the script and about Christina? Well, you know, I, what drew me most to it was the fact that she was, uh, she had lost touch with her culture because for me, I'm very connected to my culture and I, I, um, you know, I, even though I grew up, I was born and raised in Miami, I grew up visiting my family. So I had a closeness to my Mexican culture, um, and that I felt Christina lacked. And I think I see it a lot in, uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of my close friends, they feel like they've lost touch with traditions, which with, uh, you know, family, when you're not around in, in the same country that you, your family is from, there's certain events, things that you're not going to know how to do, you know, because you just, you're not living that. So I thought it'd be interesting to portray that sense of uh, that, that aspect of being a bit lost, feeling misplaced and then all of a sudden what I thought was one of the best parts about uh, the movie was that she realizes that it's always been within her you know there's something that that closeness to your roots uh, there's something about it that you can't you can't deny it something feels so right uh, and it doesn't matter what's around you when you feel like you fit it's it's just an uh, you can't describe the feeling it's just a sense of oh, wow, this is a part of, like, literally my DNA. It's part of me. And I thought that'd be a cool thing to be able to express and, and for people to be able to relate to, um, especially people around me uh, that I feel have that sense of, even me. When I go to Mexico, I just went and I learned how to, I knew about La Quebradita, which is like a dance where you like, like the hip breaker, but I learned how to do the jumps and stuff. And I was like, oh, it's in me when I did it, you know? Uh, so I felt like like that connection was really special and, and we don't see it that often uh, in, in films and I wanted to be a part of that. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. We don't see that enough uh, in films. At least I, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, I agree. Um, and Anna, sort of the same question for you to you the most about the character of Miranda because you're seeing his cousin who she's kind of you know far from her family culture uh, what appealed to you i lost the, la the last part Did I, what did appealed you, to you can you hear me yeah oh what appealed uh, oh my gosh yes about miranda um i mean the biggest thing for me was just the sense of um family the importance of family um, I think you really see that coming through with Miranda's character. Um, obviously, there's there's pain that's shown from, you know, someone who, as a small child, was probably her best friend, and then just was removed out of her life, and uh, some hope of her to always return, and then 
never did. And then one day she comes back and it's, well, I mean, we're family. So I'm, I'm, I'm here. You need me. What do you need? Let's, let's catch up. You know, I'm telling you about the things you want to hear about and warning you. And then giving that tough love at the same time and to be able to give tough love to someone that I haven't seen in 20 years, um, I think speaks to the love that is, is there inside, uh, regardless of the fact that we haven't seen each other in so long. Um, I really, really loved uh, that about that character. Um, I think Miranda's just so sweet. <laughs> And intelligent. I was hoping you would say the body horror. The, the, the yeah. body horror? I mean, you know. I, I know. Mean, There's I, a lot of emotional talk yeah, here. I, so I really I'm like really that, into uh, hair vomit. Yes. <laughs> yes. Too much body horror. You know? I, the, the stunts that were hanging, hanging from the, the ceiling was fun. And, you know, Bridget, Bridget, uh, I think Bridget may have actually really, uh, like when the nails go into my forearm, I think she really a couple times really dug in there in real life <laughs> she knows she did it was really Stop. easy to like, keep track of where they were because they were really there <laughs> it was oh. pretty bad yeah it was pretty good bad. for continuity <laughs> oh my gosh i i couldn't help it really i was in the moment <laughs> it was great though. well uh, sort of a, i had a question that's a little bit but, uh, along the lines of what you're talking about. Um, Bridget, I wonder, uh, Christina in the movie has to drink a lot of milk. I believe it's goat's <laughs> milk. Is it, is it, is it, and I wonder, how much milk did you really have to drink when you were making oh the movie? Gosh. You know, it was around <laughs> often. Um, well, that, that first scene, that first scene, we actually, we scratched. Remember, guys, that we were supposed to do it in the original? Yeah. We spent in weeks to, developing a, a special it? contraption to simulate force feeding someone goat milk. And she was like, no, just get rid of it. Just pour it down my throat. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, we'll just do it. We'll do two takes. It'll be fine. Oh my gosh. Oh God. We're going to get a skull not... sag. <laughs> it, it was just going to be so complicated, Michelle. And it was going to, it was going to feel like a gimmicky. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it would have been great when they edited and everything. I was just like, let's just do it. You know, this is what Christina's going through. Let's just go through it. <laughs> Enough said, let's just get it done. <laughs> and I just, I think it honestly, it helped us because, you know, anyone like shoving anything down your throat, putting anything on you, you don't want, you feel like claustrophobic. You feel like someone's, uh, if you someone's hurting you, you know? So I just felt like it lent itself for that, the line that follows, which is what the actual fuck. Um, and I just felt like we needed it for that to for that to feel real. Um, um, yeah, there was a lot of milk. I guess g getting back to your question, uh, that was the most milk I ever had in a short amount of time. I don't plan to have that much milk ever again. And um, and then we just kept having milk throughout. You know, it's a blast. It was <laughs> almond milk. That is <laughs> Yeah, that is so impressive. I have to say, I, yeah, I was wondering how much milk did you really have to drink? Whatever you saw <laughs> for there. this movie, so that's that's <laughs> a lot. <laughs> it was real. Yeah, it was like on my underwear, on my like everywhere, my shirt, like all parts of me oh. were full of milk. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. that doesn't. Oh, those oh. sound great. <laughs> um, well, uh, my next question is for um, Christopher and Marcus. Can you guys hear me okay? Can, mm -hmm. can you guys hear me? Yes, yeah, we, we can hear you. Okay. Pretty good. I was getting a little, my internet was trying to go out. Um, for Christopher and Marcus, to talk about um, addiction could be a metaphor for addiction um, as part of Christina's story. And I want to know intend for Christina to be sort of exercising her own demons uh, while she was dealing with her addiction? 
Yeah, that was certainly a part of the script uh, and part of the discussions before the script, really, as we looked at it. We wanted to build that. Chris sometimes says, you know, the obvious metaphor or whatever, but we, we kind of wanted that journey of this person who is broken and to the healing that can be found. And we really likened it to the steps in uh, recovery. So that's why there are family, ma- it's almost like an intervention in a way. Yep. In fact, Starting with an intervention, yeah. Yeah, the place where she's being held, I don't think it's in the cut of the movie, but we say that it's an old mission hospital is the location she's in. So it's yeah, on the Blu-ray eventually, you'll see a deleted scene with that. But the, it was always a part of these steps we could take. And it was really interesting because, um, you know, we showed the script to people who had gone through recovery and they picked up on it immediately and really loved the way it tracked and loved, you know, those moments where you have to do things alone and you have to do things with a family member that you think they're hurting you and causing you harm because you don't see what's inside of you that's causing this harm and the harm that it causes to others around you. Yeah. So that was and certainly you to, something you have to, like, you know, make atonement with people. You have to all the steps. We we really use that as our as our uh, hero's journey kind of arc. Yeah. Um, I just kind of translated them all into being stuck in a room with a demon. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I loved. I mean, it was it was something that we wanted to make sure was in the movie. You know, we we wanted to make a really good, effective, scary well, I- movie. At that part of yeah, we we wanted to make a good, effective, scary movie, but we also wanted to make a movie that mattered on multiple levels. So if it mattered, this story uh, and this metaphor mattered, we wanted to treat it with importance. And the same thing as Bridget and Andrea were saying, the things they were attracted to. We really wanted this other story of like the connection and healing that can be found when you return to your family, when you return to a place that knows you. And so I think all of those kind of dovetail together. And that's why, you know, at the end of the day, we, we were trying to make something really scary, but we wanted to make something that also like resonated and hopefully, you know, found its mark. Yeah, and hopefully it all ties together, you know, the idea of how difficult it is to overcome um, an addiction alone um, mm-hmm. versus if you actually have like a, a support system um, and trying to differentiate between like, you know, people who mean well, but are kind of enablers versus people who are willing to do the hard work themselves, which is where Miranda comes in. Um, so hopefully it's all, you know, you can kind of think like there's a demon story, there's the family story, there's the addiction story, but the dream is that it's all a braid, you know, that comes together and each kind of supports the other one. Bridget's playing with her braids <laughs> to, to illustrate. Yeah, it really point. does. It really does come together. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really like that part of the story that um, she, Christina, is dealing with uh, multiple things at once. You know, she's kind of on a spiritual journey and she's dealing with addiction and, yeah, an actual demon too. So, yeah, I, that's what I really like about the story. Um, Justin, you're a producer on the film. And I have to ask what, um, you know, attracted you to this project? Um, well, obviously the script is a big piece of it, but um, more than that for me, I, it's I, a big deal is getting to work with people that you like and knowing the team that was behind this um, uh, is kind of really put this to the front of the projects that I was considering to do next. I, I'd done a film called The Mortuary Collection um, and Chris and Marcus and the rest of the team at um, Soapbox Films had um, supported that and helped um, get that thing over the finish line. And um, we kind of known each other for years, but getting to work with them on that was something that really kind of um, opened my eyes to how uh, they approached the craft and, and how they um, uh, interact with other team members. And so when they, uh, they mentioned that they had this project that they're looking to do. Um, and if, you know, I wanted to come on board and help them with that, it was kind of a no brainer at that point. Um, of course the script was great, but uh, the team for me was even better. So it was, uh, it was a pleasure to get to, to team up again with them and, and make this one happen. Uh, yeah, I've seen them. 
like broken up. They got her. I'll tell you what Michelle was gonna say. <laughs> Justin, you're amazing. Everyone loves more cherry collection. Thank you so much. Yeah. Number one on <laughs> shutter. <laughs> Very cool um, anthology there. So I didn't, I didn't know yeah, I you you. Know, we, we had. Now we can hear you. You're back. We can only hear you when you ask, can you hear me? It is an amazing <laughs> that phenomenon. Comes crystal clear. It is crystal time. clear. Yeah. <laughs> but the 45 seconds preceding that question, <laughs> we'll just assume so it's, all, it's all good stuff. Um, uh, I'm sure that I have a demon problem. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yep. I'm yep. convinced. Well, I will say, I'm um, we have. A, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just gonna no, say. I was, it. I, I was making a bruja joke. Sorry. <laughs> it was hilarious. Speaking of bruja, I don't have a bruja. <laughs> um, we have a couple of questions from um, the viewers okay. uh, who are watching this live right now. Um, someone wants to know what was it like filming in the caves in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Only two of us can answer that. Um, no, three. Yeah. No, two. That's right. Three. Sorry. Two. Um, no. You want to go first? You were in the caves. I mean, Andrea and I. Oh, no. Oh, that yeah. Was me. That was Krista. <laughs> Krista's legs. That's right. So, so, you know, the cave was, it all, it was beautiful. Honestly, like you, you, you're there and you're just like, wow, I can't believe this is just made. This is part of nature. It's, it's stunning. Um, and it was in Puerto Rico and it was just, it was a great experience. But what I thought was really uh, eerie about the whole situation was the fact that when we got to Puerto Rico, it was at the beginning of that whole like official outbreak of COVID in the United States, the ship, there was a ship, a cruise ship with a bunch of people <laughs> decked out there. Six. Oh, you mean like outside of our hotel? <laughs> yeah, outside of our hotel. You know, so we're like, okay, all this insanity is happening. We're here trying to, on our last week of filming, uh, to get these like magical shots of the, of the cave. And then you hear that whole analogy of it coming from a bat. And all of a sudden, we're in a cave full of bats. So, and then I have to sleep under a bunch of them when that whole scene that I'm passed out. So... I was really anxious, Michelle, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I was really anxious. I was so grateful to be there. It was such a cool experience, but I was like, oh my gosh, what if I, the bats land on me? What's gonna happen? You know, am I gonna be the, the COVID creature? I mean, I was thinking all kinds of the same things. Um, but more than anything, it was just stunning. It was beautiful to be there and uh, it was a great experience. And I know that they scouted they wanted it to look like the mouth, right, Chris? Like the, the yeah. Outside of the when we were when we were developing the script, you know, we Marcus and I had a big dry erase board with all the, you know, mad scribblings of Mad Men on it, and I drew what I wanted it to look like, and it was a you know big toothy uh, cave, um, La Boca, and um, our producers. We have two more producers as well. They they flew out to well, all over the place, um, you know, um, down south and over in Puerto Rico. And um, they found exactly what we drew. It was pretty insane. And we went, um, I think we, we got there and we checked it out like the day before, something like that, day or two before filming um, in person. And um, it was great. And, we, and then the next day there was a huge, you know, as there is always in Puerto Rico, there's a, a thunderstorm out of nowhere. And then it was a completely different world when we got there the next day to film it was rushing i mean a rushing river through it it was bone dry when we were there the day before we couldn't hear each other talk um if we were more than like six feet away from each other it was between the the river and the the bats and then the echo because there was i mean i would i would say conservatively there was a hundred thousand bats yeah you, i mean conservatively um oh my gosh. it was unbelievable if you shine the flashlight up I mean, luckily it was a like really big cave. So like, I wasn't, it wasn't weird to me at all. Like, but it was just, you shine the light up there and they would just whoosh, like go yeah. crazy. It was weird and, to me. Uh, yeah. And then you were <laughs> fine. You crawled all around there. It was, um, I, I did knock out. I took a nap. I took an actual nap, uh, Michelle. It was pretty great in the cave. <laughs> Bridget, I'm telling you, you are such a trooper. All that milk and 
bats. I am. Yep. Yeah. Wow. She didn't even talk about snakes. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. There's so many other harder things than the milk and the in the bats. Um, oh yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. Someone else uh, from the audience would like to know if you consulted with actual brujas for the film. Uh, we did not. We did a lot of research and watched uh, documentaries. Vice has some really great documentaries into the area. We read up as much as we could. Uh, to be honest, I just didn't, you know, didn't know who to call exactly. Um, but we did try to gather as much um, kind of anecdotal stories from people who had experiences with brujas. Uh, Luz, who, uh, sorry, Julia, who played Luz in our story, our bruja. Uh, has uh, stories uh, that she knows and she tells of um, of experiences Healers. with a bruja when she was younger and things like that. So we certainly did fold into as much information as uh, we could. One of the key, uh, the reason why the movie is called The Old Ways and not like the ways of bruja or, or like a thing that happens in Mexico <laughs> is we were really always looking for what is the source material even older than where we are now? So whatever practices we know of and these practices, what is the source even older than that? And that went into uh, the spiritual uh, things that we do in the movie. That went into the design of our demon where we said, okay, these are things uh, that we've seen in Aztec and Mayan history. Um, what if that was something someone saw and it was this demon or it was that. So we were always thinking not just of like, where are we now? You know, if, if we see a spirit healing or, a, you know, um, one of those things happening, what is the psychic like surgery. older practice, psychic surgery, thank you, Chris. What is the older practice of that look like? So we were always kind of putting things through that lens as much as possible. Oh, yeah. Well, speaking of the uh, psychic surgery, uh, I was going to actually mention that this movie has some really great practical effects. Um, I'm a huge fan of practical effects. Uh, we are too, I, yeah. I, when I, I see that stuff. Um, and so uh, first I want to know uh, for Bridget and Andrea, what was it like for you to working with the makeup and all the practical effects in the film. Dre, I'll let you take it first. <laughs> you have a lot more to talk about. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I mean, we really, honestly, just working with everyone on this set, we really became a family and we were really close. It was, um, I mean, it was one room, you know, the, the almost the whole movie takes place in one room. So it was, it was small, so we we're all really close uh, physically. <laughs> all the time um but Callie was amazing uh I mean every time I watch the film and I see like even just the that's our the makeup artist patches on my uh, arm when they get all infected I can feel the itchiness again and I start squirming because it's so uncomfortable uh it when I had to scratch it I was like this is gonna be easy to make it real because it itches like crazy um because it really like pulls your skin in and I didn't know about that I, I've had um like prosthetics and stuff on my face and blood but these uh this was was different I, I always love doing all this kind of fun stuff I think it's really cool um it adds so many like layers and elements and for us the more practical effects are um you know, the realer it feels for us on the day, um, which is helpful always, as opposed to it being there later. I mean, even having a physical demon there was great. It was very helpful. Although we did do a couple shots where we had to pretend that we were seeing him and we didn't see him. <laughs> which is... um, I'll add on. Uh, so yeah, everything Dre said is, you know, we really got so close. We were all together and uh, it, it was like a warehouse space where we filmed this, a big studio, obviously. Um, but the actual stages were, it wasn't, you know, you think we were in this, like all this land and in a little, like in a, in a little area in this, this big barn or something, but we weren't. Um, it's the magic of filmmaking. 
But as far as uh, prosthetics go and all the effects, you know, they did go for the that that rash that I get on my eye, the the where, when they slay my oh, eye, gosh. the Jesus slays. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the, the slay, <laughs> the slaying of the eye, the scar. Um, that was a prosthetic, and and that was a whole process, and it did pull, it pulled on the skin, and it was it was a joy ride. Okay, <laughs> it was a blast, <laughs> Michelle. Um, it was hard, you know, it was hard to have it and not be able to see. I'd never acted with really one eye. So that was a whole new experience. Um, I still owe my wife like a bottle of wine though, because you know, that used to happen at the midpoint of the movie. And she was like, no actress is going to want to wear a bandana over their a face. Whole movie. For I do. I, this is, this is true. I, I gotta really, I gotta get her something because thank God it would have been so hard. Um, so anyway, they slay my eye and uh, it, it's suddenly, you know, suddenly uh, gone. And that was, I think that was really challenging. But what was even more challenging than that was uh, the contact because it was so damn thick. Um, and I, I, I don't have glasses on, so I've never worn glasses. So for me, it was, um, it was hard to have that contact put in. It was, I would, I would like smack Cali. Yeah, we got Because that was a Cali. scleral <laughs> contact, which is, <laughs> covers the, the white. Cali. Three people have to like two people have to hold their eye open while getting uh, the eye. size of a pizza slice, and you just have to like shove it in there. Yeah, I got <laughs> lucky. My contacts were supposed to be the whole eye bulb, and then Callie was like, "That's not necessary. We'll make them smaller." And even that was hard. So I can't imagine having to do it. Was yeah, you. so thick, Michelle. I wish I could actually show you. Like, I wish, I wish I had it with me. You have so to go I get it. <laughs> Go get like that a was, saucer or something and that'll it was, demonstrate it. It was yeah. so hard. That was the hardest, but Frisbee. You know, like the, oh, I have it right here. Here it is. <laughs> oh, stop it. Um, but you know, the, the other things that we did, like the hair, the hair gag, that was, that was another point where we got real close. Like um, there's some stuff that wasn't in the movie, but like for the, the stuff that you did see Callie, the, the, uh, makeup uh, and hairstylist she actually we were trying to figure out how to do the hair gag so it, it looked real you know so it was a whole process to find it and then finally we figured out how to place it in the mouth to then pull it out and then just all this all the stuff that they had to put on it and it was just, it was so disgusting I mean it tasted kind of good you know this because of the syrups but uh <laughs> but the actual sensation in the mouth was really grotesque feel, right um how it felt what else the snakes people think the snakes were effects but they were real uh and they were you know all of a sudden there was a snake coming in <laughs> and that was not uh, that was no lie that was that was there that was no effect uh so i think, I think bridget i think yeah. you gave us too much credit when you read the script and you were like oh good i'll focus on the emotion drama and this will be computers <laughs> probably i just never even <laughs> I don't even know what happened to me. I must have read it and just thought, I, I don't know. I guess I didn't think it was going to, you know, you read something and you don't think it's going to happen and then it's happening and you're there. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> I was imagining all of it. Now we're, we're doing it. And I, I Those never even snakes? really had like any, any experience with snakes. So for me, it was just kind of like the feeling of them and how they try to find a hole to hide, you know, under and then wrap themselves it, it was pretty, um, I guess maybe gnarly is a good word. That is a good word. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. I don't think I realized, you know, fully until we all had this conversation, how much you went through, Bridget. I mean, the milk, yes, but my goodness. <laughs> yeah, she was lot. tied up or strapped down or force fed oh almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then on the days when she wasn't being tortured, we had to torture her in the makeup chair before she started working. So, I mean, yeah, there is a lot. <laughs> um, uh, and I wanted to ask uh, Christopher Marcus, how did you, you mention your makeup artist is named Luz? Oh, no, sorry. Callie is our makeup artist. Oh, uh, Luz was our, the character okay. name for Julia, the, our Bruja. But go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. You're Right. Um, and I wanted to know, how did you work, work with uh, the makeup artist to 
achieve the look that you, you know, you envisioned to, to bring it to life as far as the practical effects and the makeup? Yeah, I mean, it was a it was a fun collaboration with her. She she came to the table with a bunch of ideas because the script was really evocative. I think how it was written. Um, I had a bunch of I had some references, um, and I would Photoshop some stuff up, and I would loosely kind of paint some ideas uh, in my iPad, and then we would just kind of kick them back and forth, and um, then she would have like a game plan for like a test day, and we did the tests and. It didn't look like it was kind of more like clownish or something like the the actual material we used. I don't know if you remember that, Bridget, but it was like smoother and that wasn't working for us. So we were trying to think like, how can we, because we wanted the the materials or at least to look like materials that could be found and made artisanally, you know, by somebody who lives in the jungle without a lot of financial resources. So it had to kind of look like it was made from like clay and and mud and things like that or actual goat blood and chunkier stuff. So it's like she found this one kind of like clay mask mud. I don't know, I'm speaking out of turn here, but she found one that would dry on their face and then they would crack it and everything. And then she would take this clumpy, nasty um, kind of blood chunky stuff and use that as the red paint for that and but then she also had some she had some really cool ideas because the idea of christina is to merge the new kind of modern person with the old ways and because their whole argument in the movie is were the old ways better than the new ways and like well maybe there's a hybrid you know maybe we can move forward and so she had a lot of since i don't know anything about fashion um she had a lot of ideas of how to incorporate christina's character into the old style um, where, you know, Bridget can probably talk more about it, but like the eye makeup that was kind of incorporated in the smokier kind of look there. Chris? Um, oh, you're back. You broke up. Well, now you're gone again. Did okay. you hear any of that? Nope. No. Chris? <laughs> the shop? She's been, she's been, oh, no. oh, there. Hey, now you're have there. We, have we... Did we lose someone or? Bridget's is there, but I think she might be like delayed. Yeah, I lost you for a little bit, but I'm I'm here. Oh, you're back. I was just saying, yeah, if you knew anything more about, because um, the way you and and I think you had a lot of feedback in it too, like the kind of Christina vacation of the older Bruja look, as far as like eye makeup and and some of the hair um, choices there the, to make it more modern and. Yeah, Callie wanted to, uh, I remember, because you didn't want it to look, uh, you weren't going for like, oh, uh, a, a beautiful or like uh, aesthetic, it had to be aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing, but more than anything, it had to ring true, right, to the surroundings and the, the resources. So I, I think the whole idea was to make it, fuse it with uh, the old Bruja, which is loose, and make uh, Christina, the new Bruja, just make like a, a, a new look, what would be, you know, taking um, a little bit of the old Bruja and making it with, Christ- infusing it with Christina's personality and who she is. And, you know, that's where all like the cool braiding came in. And even, she even had straw in the in the braids um, to, you know, to make it feel real as though it were something that her and Miranda did together and almost ceremonial, like preparing her face uh, with that kind of like reddish, bloodish, uh, gunky looking, uh, material that she puts uh, over her face after all the clay is is uh, is prepared, you know, and put on her face. So it was a, a fusion. Yeah, because she's still a millennial or whatever people your age are, um, you know. Like so, she had to infuse her own. <laughs> Theoretically, you know, loose is this is her expression of herself, you know, that she's doing, and so Christina needed to do that as well, and it needed to be someone who was raised in Los Angeles in the 21st century so yeah yeah I, I really like the look like you're just talking about the the newer uh, compared yep. to the older one like the um, cool pastor who plays rock and roll at the youth group you know <laughs> yes <laughs> yes for. exactly like that um we have someone from the audience who says 
The set design and visuals are fantastic. Um, how much of it was based on actual practices from Mexican tribal folklore? Um, well, in terms of the set design, uh, our production designer, sir, designer Bryce Perrin had worked on a few different movies in like Southern Mexico and in the region. He had incredible uh, photography and um, reference images to kind of build our set and our environment. And it was really just, I mean, we had to kind of trust where he was going because at the end of the day, the set really just came together beautifully, but it was like kind of a madness uh, for it all. In terms of the practices and things like that, like we were talking about earlier, um, we were always looking at, you know, what is uh, like a psychic surgery or things like that? Like, how do we go back to a source level before that? Certainly some of the things you see Javi doing in the movie with the kind of the leaves and the herbs and things like that, uh, uh, spitting into the air and things like that are things that we certainly um, looked at, referenced, uh, tried to capture, again, the spirit of the practice, but also just drawing it back and making it a little more raw and uh, source material for that. I mean, he's a and trained, certainly, he's a trained uh, Aztec style dancer. So that was all his actual dance moves, the all the um, everything with the leaves and that stuff is very authentic. Um, and we're by no means the authorities on Brujeria. But one of the exciting things I think we discovered as we started getting into the research was that there really was no like Bible for this practice. Like there wasn't a, um, an edict of this is exactly what they all do because it, it always seems to be very localized and specific to their conditions and their circumstances and what might be happening in their town or village or um, city. Um, and it's very, it seems to be very personalized. And, um, and one of the things we really liked is how it was like a mix. It's always like a mixture, like a, the melting pot idea of, of different influences. So there is little pieces of Catholicism, you know, and rosary beads in the same place where they're, you know, have a a devil candle <laughs> and but they're then they're using bottles of tequila and putting like people's names in it and then you know there's all these just different things put together that just works for that particular practitioner and um that was exciting because it gave us all these <laughs> it opened up a lot of possibilities and we were able to i think authentically draw from lots of influences and make the most exciting movie we could without being um you know unkind to any specific people. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that makes the movie so interesting is how you mix all those different elements together. And like we mentioned earlier, there just has never been a movie like this. Kind of all the possession movies seem to follow the same formula, you know, pretty much, at least for me. Um, so yeah, that's why this film stands out so much. Um, and, and it, what makes it so interesting. Um, I wondered if um, we could maybe kind of go around and if everyone has maybe a favorite behind the scenes story you could share with us about making a movie. I must, but I'm not gonna go first. <laughs> um, Andrea, go. <laughs> Why are we doing that to Andrea? Marcus, go. <laughs> me? Oh my God. You know, for me, uh, probably one of my favorite uh, days and moments was, I mean, look, it was all magical. And every time going into the monitor and seeing these things happen and everybody like, are these artisans making things? It was like, oh my God, and we're making this movie and look at this emotion. But uh, one of my favorite days was like, really when we were testing out like the saliva. Oh. Gunk trying to figure out like viscosity for Postecki's like saliva stuff. Cause like, that's what movies are to me. You know, like as a kid, like that's, I looked at it, I was like, that's the alien. Like that's the same stuff that are out of like Jabba the Hutt's mouth. It's the same <laughs> garbage that's being made. So design, uh, uh, figuring out the right mixture of that. And then we did do a test where Postecki uh was the real pistachi was kind of surging forward at uh the two ladies on camera here and we did actually like blast saliva and goo at them 
and it was very surprising and very exciting. <laughs> One of my favorite days. <laughs> we had those fake makeshift skirts. <laughs> yeah. Them. I know we had to protect the set because the floor was a rental so like whenever we had goo and stuff and on your outfits like we don't have money we're an independent movie so like the outfits couldn't get destroyed so yeah we'd have to cover our cover you guys up in like tarps Fresh bags. yeah I mean it's amazing anytime you see a horror movie and you see like blood flying everywhere I'm always like how did they do that <laughs> how did you reset and do a take two like it's so messy that's what's fun um i mean one thing that kept happening that isn't like specifically the move well it's because of us uh, the fire alarm kept going off mm -hmm. while we were shooting and the fire we kept having to evacuate yeah. because of our smoke our um our haze, or, haze our haze we wanted it to look like it was you know 98 percent humidity <laughs> in the desert <laughs> gosh yeah that was like college like when when you're in the dorms and you always have the um the fire drill yeah, somebody at wait. three in the morning somebody pulls the alarm pizza party yes. wait for the <laughs> fire alarm. those firefighters <laughs> love it too they'd show up every day and there'd be different costume and well, what are you guys doing now <laughs> what kind of movie is this i see you've changed the wardrobe you're doing this um i'll i'll jump in i'll say that my favorite behind the scenes little tidbit is that every now and then crew would bring food, little snacks, and Bridget brought some cookies that were just amazing one day. Oh, I forgot. I think I made them, right? Yeah, you made them homemade cookies. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that was, that was pretty. Yeah, yeah. Although they ran up really fast, so. Yeah, it's so quick. Yeah, it was a little bit of drama. Who could get a cookie and who couldn't? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to jump in now. Uh, for me, it was... So I really, I didn't, I had never been in a, a film that required so much action. Uh, it was, you really had to break it down a lot into actions uh, and you had to like land somewhere in order for the camera to be able to get the shot the way it's meant to. So one of my favorite moments was, and this moment might, to some might be corny for me, it was epic, was when, when Christina takes off her belt, she's like, oh yeah, demon, I'm gonna let you have it. That was like my Tomb Raider moment of my life. Uh, and so for me, that was like the best. And I guess it's not really like behind the scenes stuff, but more like what was going on in my head, um, which isn't what you asked, I'm sorry. <laughs> but that was for me, that was pretty epic. It was just, but I, it had to land in a specific place. And, you know, for me to walk through this little narrow area in order to get the shot uh, to look cool. And then that slow-mo that Chris, loves and i love too i'm a big fan of it uh so yeah that was my my favorite yeah that totally counts no that absolutely does count so yeah okay cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh i don't know i was just talking the other day to our friend ryan spindell just a name drop um the director of the mortuary collection and this yeah. story that i was talking to him about was it's like the most recent one i can think of that was interesting to me but I, it was just because we did so much prep on this movie and we planned everything out as, as good as we could and practiced everything and then but still you have these like independent film moments that are actually super fun like I, I the morning we were doing the scene where she's like at the the threshold to the yes. from the inside to the outside and she can't get through and there's like a force field there but like we didn't have a, a force field obviously um so mm -hmm. I woke up in like a flop sweat that morning because I was like, it's going to look stupid. Like she's not going to be able to do it. Like, because she's like, you know, super athletic. Like she could make herself shake if she wanted to, I'm sure. But like, there's a difference between shaking yourself and being shook, you know? And I was like, how are we going to, it's just going to look stupid. It's going to look like she's, you know, pretending. And um, I was like, oh, if we could just tie like a jackhammer to her arm. <laughs> it'd be fine everybody's like oh no you can't do that that's impossible and that'll kill her and i was like i don't know like there's these little jackhammer like, that'll kill her called. i don't know maybe i was like you know, it was pretty late in the filming i was like she's game uh <laughs> but, like i was like okay go get this thing it's called a, a i was like if we cool well first we were like okay let's go get a um what are those things the thera gun so we rushed out we looked yeah. all over like there's a bed bath and beyond down the street or something we've got a a body massager and we were trying that and it wasn't powerful enough and 
<laughs> I was like, oh, you know, I had this thing at home. It's called a, a sawzall. And it's like you use it to cut through the reciprocating like drywall and wood and stuff. Like it's a reciprocating saw that's really strong. I was like, let's just, can we just get one of those and like, you know, take the blade off, obviously, but like tie it, like put something soft on your elbow and then do that. And they were like, I don't know. I don't know. And then she was like, yeah, let's do it. So we did it. <laughs> it looked awesome. I mean, it was like vibrating her <laughs> big time. Like it was pretty cool. And then we just had to like paint out the little, there was like a string. <laughs> We got rid of that, but um, I thought it, that was a really fun moment because, like, mm -hmm. I woke up convinced the day was completely shot, and then I almost said that, that one, Chris. Minute. I almost said really? that one. The jackhammer. Yeah. yeah. We got to yeah. keep the uh, massage gun for a while before we returned it. Don't tell Ben. Oh yeah, that. we did pass that thing around. Well, that was money. Back. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, no one from Bed Bath and Beyond is no. watching right now. Maybe right? it was Target. You never know. Who knows? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely that bad to be on. Oh, Andrew, did you have a story already? Did you already go? Uh, I mean, I do some I mean, there's so much. I, I love the stunts. All, all the stunt stuff is like my favorite. Every day was was always great. I mean, doing the wire stunts, like they had to I had to wear a harness that I don't know how we were still able to get my pants on because it's so thick um and then cutting holes through like the my knees and my shirt and my head was pounding from hanging upside down and screaming and yelling and talking and crying it hurt it was like one thing to just be upside down and like a handstand it's another thing to be hanging from your feet like straight up just being suspended in the air and then all the blood is going down and you're yelling uh, but it was so much fun. I'm dying to do it again <laughs> and yeah, just be dragged out of the room too. Like that was, that was a lot of fun also. That and shot of you like going upside down fully <laughs> is like, I, I like lose my breath every time I see it. I'm like, oh, it's so cool looking. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that was just every time that we, cause we did, we drew, we had a lot of prep time. Um, and we, so we drew a lot of the storyboards and stuff and it was just every time that something actually like looked exactly like our dream from four months before was super exciting. And that one in particular where she's upside down, like looks exactly like, like the art. And that was pretty rewarding to see that happen in real time instead of just in our head or on a piece of paper. Oh yeah. We had those nails. They had like nails in the ground that I had to help keep my hands down so they didn't come off the the oh, that was hard. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like my through my fingers. You can't see it. It's just like holding me. So that was that was hard. That was the hardest part of that stunt, keeping my hands <laughs> yeah, flat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and even because like even when it stabs you, when the nail goes through, you, you naturally like want to move your body, and when it gets to the other hand, you like want to pull away, but you oh. don't have anything holding you down. So it's kind of it's a it's a mind game. A master class in acting. Wow. Wow. That's that's crazy. Um, well, I think that we are just about out of time for tonight. Um, but I have not stopped talking about this movie since I oh, first saw you. it at Chattanooga a few months ago. I've told everybody okay. that they need to see it. You're um, the one. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Um, so great. You're very welcome. Yeah, so I'm so glad that it's on Netflix so people can see it uh, because it is such a different uh, take on possession, on the possession subgenre. And uh, it's got the cool brujas, which I love and deals with addiction and, and demons. And which I think maybe I might have in my computer right now. Um, <laughs> so I'll be looking for a bruja as soon as we're- Yep, and she's gonna rub an egg over the laptop. You know where to find us. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And I'm good at getting better. <laughs> I might be calling on you guys <laughs> to help me exercise this demon in my computer. But uh, so again, I apologize for all the technical difficulties. Um, and thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight and joined us for dissecting horror with uh, the creators of the old ways. Thank you again to Marcus Gabriel, Christopher Allender, T. Justin Ross, Bridget Callie Canellis, and Andrea Cortez.